Hi, my name is Isabella Brewer, and I am not exaggerating when I say that Sydney Ellen is truly one of the kindest people I have ever met. She is the epitome of the mom friend. She genuinely cares for every person in our grade as if we are her own children, never failing to make you feel welcomed and loved every single day. Since we share a last name starting with B, her locker was just a few feet away from mine for freshman, sophomore, and junior year. I could always count on Sydney Allen's smile greeting me in the hallway every morning, comforting me and making me feel instantly better no matter how my day was going. I will also never forget our Algebra 2 class sophomore year in which Sydney Allen and I were two of only five sophomores in the class. I knew that I could always glance over at her and exchange confused looks when we didn't understand Mr. McCullough's lesson. But no matter how difficult the lesson was, Sydney Ellen always carried herself with effortless grace and kept that same comforting smile. I know our beloved Seb has something amazing to share with you today, so please give it up for the class of 2020's own Sydney Ellen Blinn. Every time I walk into a gas station, I go straight to the keychains with names on them. And not once have I found Sydney Ellen on one keychain. Now I understand that they don't print double names on keychains, so I tell myself, it's okay. I'll just get one with Sydney and one with Ellen. But no, I've only ever been to one gas station that had an Ellen keychain, and that was in Canada. So again, I tell myself, it's okay. I will settle for Sydney Helen or Sydney Allen. But no, they don't even have a knockoff version of my name. And once again, I am stuck with only one keychain in my hand that reads Sydney. And not once have I ever walked out of a gas station with only a Sydney keychain, because that is not my name. My name is Sydney Ellen, and if it is too hard for you to remember, you can call me Seb. I used to not like my name. I thought Sydney Ellen was too hard to spell and too long to say. The only time I truly appreciated it was at my kindergarten graduation, when everyone's name was printed on a piece of cake and mine was significantly larger than the rest of the class. <laughs> but at that age, I didn't really understand what my name really meant. I am named in honor of my late grandmother, Sue Ellen. My parents named me after her to encourage me to get to know the woman that I never got to meet. She was honest, practical, and an overall inspiring woman, so I lived to fulfill my namesake. My name always meant more to my parents than it did to me, which is why they always, when they told me to correct people, when they got it wrong, I would respond, no, Sydney is okay with me. And at one point it was, but starting in approximately sixth grade, it began to bother me when people would forget the Ellen part of my name. But despite my own feelings, I never corrected them because I didn't want to seem high maintenance or difficult. My whole life, my introductions have gone a little something like this. Hey there, what's your name? To which I then respond, Sydney Ellen followed by a wince and cringe, I wait to see what they say. And about nine times out of 10, they respond with, nice to meet you, Sydney. If only I had the audacity to correct them, but instead, I smile and say, nice to meet you too. I let them get my name wrong because I don't want to cause them any trouble. I don't want to correct people, even if the information is about me. In reality, my name means something to me, and I don't want people getting it wrong. I know if I were to correct them, they wouldn't think twice about it, but it's the fear of making the other person feel bad. Oftentimes, I find myself doing and saying things solely because I want to please the people around me. I have to learn that I can't live my life in concern of everybody else without taking into consideration my own wants and needs. Our names are our identities, a word or two that we will hear for the rest of our lives. It is the first thing you learn about someone but might be the last thing you remember. Make an effort to call people by the right name pronounce it how they want, and remember it when you can. On the other hand, don't be afraid to correct someone when they get it wrong. It is your identity, and you are the only person who is able to tell them what is right. To the class of 2020, thank you for calling me by the right name and for creating all of my now popular nicknames such as Seb and Sebi. As we go into college next year, don't let anyone say your name wrong. Although we will be making new friends and creating new memories, don't be afraid to correct people whether it be your name or another, information, another piece of information about you. Now is the time to present yourself the way you want to be known for the next chapter of your life. So don't let anyone take that away from you. Thank you.